Hi, Steve King here. Today I'm going to show you how to create icons and how to save them and edit them so that you can save your processing steps for future use. So let's do a simple example here. Let's say we want to open the process of curves transformation. Okay. Uh, do, do, do. There we go. Curves transformation. Now we know this can be used to adjust the gain in an image and such. Okay, so that we won't go into how we're going to use it, but if we want to save this process, we grab the little new instance icon to left and drag it onto an empty spot. And there we've created one. Okay. I can close this now. This little icon, now, if I double click it, there's the curves transformation again. Now, when you've created this icon, you can name it the little N up here if you click on it. And we can put in here curves transformation. Let's just call it CT. Call it anything you want, it's your name. And down below the little letter D, description, if you click on that, it has no description so far, but if you click in this little icon here, and now you can enter, enter your instructions for how to use this icon. When you're done, click on Commit. And you'll notice the little D is now turned red. That means there's something in there. If you click on it, it has whatever you wrote in to the uh, description. So you can have multiple lines if you want, showing how to use this particular thing or what, what special requirements it may have for the uh, picture you're going to apply it to. Okay, when you close that, it doesn't go away. It just simply closes it, but it's still there. Say next we want to do clone stamping. You can open up over here, it's easier. Clone stamping. Say you wanted to start out with a radius of 150, you want a large uh, area that you're going to grab, softness 0.5, make it a little soft on the edges to blend. These values, whatever values are in these settings here, see I changed this to 100, softness 0.5. If I drag this again onto an empty spot, I've now saved that process. If I double click the icon, there it is, radius 100, softness 0.5. So it saves your settings. That can be really handy when you get to some of the complicated processes that have many settings. Let's just call it clone stamp. Description. Editing box. Use this to repair any star artifacts. That might be the instruction that you wanted to leave with it. Click commit, and now it saved those instructions. Okay, let's get something that has a bit more. Settings. Now here's one, TGV denoise, lots of settings. What color space we're going to work in. The strength, edge protection, I won't go into what all this is. These are the default settings. Say you decided that you wanted the edge protection to be 5. 
That's a lot of noise reduction. So you set it to five or thereabouts. Drag the new instance icon to an empty spot. Close this. We'll rename it TGV just so we know what it is. Directions, edit. Make sure to apply a mask first. Okay, that's the instructions that I want to have for this to remind me to put a mask in. So now if I open this up, here the edge protection is set at near five, just like the way we saved it. So once you find a set of instructions that you like, you can save them and use them over and over. Now, what if you want to edit this? What if you decide five is too strong? I want to put it at three. Well, open the thing up, double click on it to open it, set it at three, and then drag this new instance icon onto the icon that you want to change. And it asks you, do you want to change it? Yeah. Also, it has descriptive information. Do you want to preserve it? Yes. Close this. Now, when we open this, it has the edge protection of three rather than five, just like we changed it. So now you can see how you can edit it. You can have as many of these icons as you want. Once you have the complete set that you want to do something, maybe linear processing or nonlinear processing, then very important, right click in an empty spot, go down to process icons, and save process icons. This will go to whatever location is already set up in your system. I think I moved mine to users, my name, and PI icons. But wherever it is, it doesn't really matter where it is. As long as your system will know where it's at. And then down here in the blue, you can put in the name. So we'll call this test. You can't have spaces in any name, so you have to have an underline. Test icons. Oh, there's already one called test one. We'll write it, yes. Okay, now I highlight these, right click. I can delete the selected icons. But if I right click in an empty space, go to process icons, load process icons, go down to test icons that we just created, double click, and here are the icons for all the processes with the settings that we had before. So you can add icons, you can delete any individual icon, just click on any individual icon, and it has this delete right here. If I click that, it's gone. And then I can add any other icon that I want to create. So I hope you've seen how you can create these icons, how you can edit them, how you can save them, and how you can bring them back the next time you open PixInsight. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.